Brent Fikowski and his coach David drop by for a week to train with our on-site group. And on this episode of the Corpus Animus podcast, we dive into his 10-year CrossFit career, how he's helping HQ professionalize the sport, and a sobering discussion around pain tolerance if you want to compete at the highest levels. For those serious about the sport of fitness, now is the time to build strength, gymnastic skills, and improve your overall capacity. We have divisions for RX, intermediate, masters, and elite athletes. For more information, go to trainingthinktank.com. I think the one thing at the games was uh, an ability to tolerate pain. Discomfort. Yeah. I think that's, uh, and, and maybe, you know, that was like the 40 men at the CrossFit Games. I think that was the one thing I came to where, you know, of those 40, like 37 of them, like they can tolerate a lot. Can you dive into that a little bit? Like tolerate pain. So, yeah. And I'm talking about like, you know, doing a thruster and burpee workout and go into a 10 out of 10. Yeah. In like this really hurts. And so I've seen some people at like a CrossFit gym that are kind of like me where they're very analytical and they deeply care about movement and they can't get, they're like, oh man, that was a 10 out of 10. I'm like, that was a six. Yeah. I can just tell from your body language that you went to, a, like if I had a gun to your head. Like you, your subjective pain your experience. Your subjective pain experience is not, and everyone's is different, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, your subjective pain experience is not a 10 and you think it is. Yeah. Do um, you think that there's more people that are not elite that actually can tap into that? Because that I, I've coached. A lot of people at the t- high level and then maybe all the way through the spectrum. And I feel like some of the people that have less talent actually have more, s- sometimes, more grit because that's the only thing only they way. can leverage to keep getting better. Whereas people that have talent, like I don't know for sure. I can't go into Noah's body if he blocks it out. But sometimes it seems like when he's in his highest element, he's moving at full speed and like dropping the hammer and not in that much pain or discomfort. Yeah, and so, and this isn't a s- slight towards Noah, but I would I would agree that Noah, you know, on a scale of Noah to who's a who's a games athlete that can clearly tolerate a lot of pain that will just like go into the shit. Like Dane Smith, I know he hasn't made the games, um, but I've spoken with Ben about Dane Smith, and he can like basically put himself into the hospital and yeah. thruster workout yeah. in like a scary way where he can't talk for 30 minutes after work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would say on a scale of like Noah, I, Noah I, when wouldn't I, when dig I, into yeah, that. When I you watch would Noah, it just doesn't, and I would say I'm in between those two people. Yeah. Like, and, and that's not to be like, I'm tougher than Noah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just, yeah. I just, you, know, you leverage different things to yeah. get the top performance. But it's, yeah. And so, yeah, so that's interesting. I'm saying, obviously, that the games athletes, they have that. But there's plenty of people you watch at a CrossFit gym yeah. that can go just as hard or yeah. harder than me, you know, in that subjective pain tolerance. But so they just don't have the skills or the yeah, mindset or the, or the mobility. Is that something or, you practice? You Like, do you think that person that you're talking about at the gym who's not going there just needs to practice going there? Or they just don't have it? They don't have it? <laughs> what is it? That's a good training question, Gosh, too. Because I, I'm, I'm not... <sighs> There's probably an order of operations on <laughs> it too. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not one to complain or talk about like genetics or like this guy doesn't have it. The pain tolerance thing, I don't know. If, yeah. can, have you have you been able to teach people that? I don't uh, know if you. I don't because this is the thing. I haven't coached a lot of people. Yeah. But I feel like of all the like you know the characteristics of like what you need to be an elite CrossFit athlete, I think you could coach pretty much all of them. Pain tolerance. Yeah. Well, I think of pain tolerance. Kind of have as to a hate a yourself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, where do you I think yours saying. comes from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> I, I think just like a a very deep desire to succeed. Yeah. And you know whatever that means, or to be maybe to be loved, like attention and yeah. Yeah, maybe not attention is the right word, but yeah, like it. Not like look at me, look how hard I can go, but. You know, like, in, I think about swimming and, like, the desire to break a record I wanted to break was very strong. Yeah, like, and it was more important than the, yeah. Oh, so, so, much, so much more important than, you know, the the desire for oxygen. Yeah. So what what I would say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's interesting, yeah. yeah. You know, like, and, but, like, yeah. Matt Fitzgerald has a book called How Bad Do You Want It? And he talks about all this research he did on endurance athletes, and it kind of says that the people that just want to go 
as hard as they possibly can to get the outcome are almost always the most likely to get it. I know it's not that simple, but it's kind of like, well, you did five years of work to get yourself into a position that you can podium at the games. That's probably feel like sifting out 99% of your competition. Who's just going to like not really dedicate themselves or not do the small details or not make their meals or not work on their technique. Yeah. And there's obviously like, there's the, you know, I, I am very patient, you know, so I can, I don't mind putting in a lot of time to something to eventually get a payoff that, you know, but, but yeah, then there's the short term, like the pain thing where I guess, I mean, here's the question. I, I didn't get to watch anyone else on the C2 bike on Friday. My guess is from like, I mean, you probably watch a lot of people on the C2 bike. Did I go as hard or harder than anyone else? I think so. Like you just, you uh, put Was the, that the last piece of yeah. the three? So the actual workout was. This will come out on YouTube at a different time. Yeah. So it's three I rounds. Say, for th- <laughs> take, like, yeah, ball, yeah. Subscribe. <laughs> Three rounds for time, touch and go power snatch, three rope climbs. It was like a, for Brent, it was a little over two minute of a workout. So he had about a minute 50 rest. Then he did muscle ups and heavy squat cleans for three rounds, which was a little under four minutes, two minute rest, and then 750 meter bike, which is what he's talking about. And in that he just like pinned it like three, two, one, go out of the saddle full speed. I think the damper got down or the pace got down to like a one Oh seven ish, which was far faster. And most people approach that and they're not truly like if you're in a car three, two, one, go like the equivalent of what you did is put the pedal to the metal and shift to your top yeah. gear. Most people didn't do that. So I think some and, of and that, that is part of, part of that's me knowing that that is going to get me the best score. Like if yeah. you had told someone to do that, they're like, all right, sure. And they yeah. do it. Yeah. They, maybe they're just like, Oh, is that a good idea? And you're like, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Coach. Yes. Yeah. In a sub 90 second workout, it's kind of okay to blow up yeah. and like hang it's like on a five meter row. Yeah. It's like, you can't really, you, you can't know, settle it. in and then it's like, no, <laughs> yeah. you, you sprint and then hold on as opposed yeah. to settle in and sprint to finish. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if you can. Yeah. You just have to, I mean, it's just a realization that in, in this sport, you know, if you want to have success, there are certain scenarios where you need to push it until it really, really hurts yeah. and just hold it there and keep for dealing with a couple it. more seconds. Yeah. 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 So to when, answer that, your, oh. when that happens to you, what are you thinking? So when you hit that point where you're like, Oh, screw this. Like, wh- what are you doing? Uh, I usually, um, yeah, I think dif- different people will do different things for me. I think about like numbers usually mm. like how many you have reps you have yeah. left or so like on the bike, I was thinking about, um, you know, I'd count to 10, like on my, my feet, one, two, oh. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then I kind of glance up and I would look at the, this is what I used to do in swimming. And so I would I'd glance at the clock and, you know, it'd say how many more meters. And I'd say, okay, that's probably only 20 more. Yeah. So count to 15 and then you're, then it's five more until you're done. Were you watching your, this was interesting. I don't know if you would have noticed this. Were you watching your pace when you looked up? Um, I don't, sometimes I don't quite remember. Okay. So your coach was yelling, keep it under 130. Right. <clears throat> and you had your eyes closed for a lot of it in that last part of the suffering. You close your eyes and be in the saddle and be pushing, and you were at like a 133, 134, and then you would open your eyes and look up. But right before you opened your eyes and looked up, you sped up and got the damper. You got the oh, speed really? to like 130. And I was like, huh, I wonder if that's conscious or if he's just like, if he's even looking at no, it. Or I, In that one, it was just, yeah, I was just, pedaling us and maybe i think at that point i was trying to like you know change a cue where i'm thinking okay you know you're pushing hard into the feet like try and think of the bottom of the stroke yeah, yeah. or just getting power any way you can you know oh you know you're you're trying to use your glutes somehow by shifting your butt in the seat or, you know, it was just stuff like that i wasn't really i in that event i was not using the monitor as any source of like really important information i mean i could have maybe looked at the rpms um, and that I was kind of bringing my damper down a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, you messed with it a lot. You had like four, or four damper changes in, I think. Oh, I three think or I four. Have three. I yeah. Three, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Three, maybe, <coughs> which I don't know. Um, I haven't had like a lot of experience sprinting on that. So yeah. it seemed like a good idea. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it works. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's so in swimming again, that's, I guess that was something I was, I learned just myself in swimming was when it, you know, starts to get painful, you know, you're thinking about okay, how many more strokes until I take a breath or how many more strokes to the wall or, or, you know, you would, especially in swimming, it just feels like your arms and your legs are filling up with cement. And so you're trying to maintain technical accuracy. And so you're, you're focusing on that, like, don't allow your, 
whatever, you know, like entry into the water to you know, start get sloppy, sloppy. Yeah. So you get sloppy. So you need to, you know, still glide in, even though you're still going fast and you're still, you know, all that sort of thing. So, yeah, you, you know, I'm basically either like honing in on some technical cue that I think is going to be important or, you know, some sort of number thing. I just uh, disassociate is basically yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the one. Yeah. You try not to like, you kind of get away from the pain, focus on anything else. Yeah. And it's that. just this like, well, there it is. Yeah. You're, you, instead of like feeling like you're in the fire, you're sort of like, an observer of yourself in the fire like huh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you know and so when yeah on the bike i did a, i did a really good job of disassociating where and it was also the knowledge going into it like this is going to be you know 10 out of 10 hurt yeah in the legs and you're just it's like a non it's not even a negotiable like yeah. that's just going to happen i think david and i were talking about that and like it's different with the squat clean where you're like oh you know yeah, i gotta wait until yeah, I'm you ready. gotta make it i yeah. gotta make it so i can't just you know be stupid and just try and touch and go or something. Yeah. But on the bike, it's just this like head first into like, well, this is going to be extremely uncomfortable and you just have to completely separate yourself as though like that discomfort is even any importance. Yeah. To the, you asked a question before we talked deeply about that and said, can you change it in coaching? I think the only, th there's a disposition. Some people are going to be tougher at dealing with it, but I think you can only try to coach the psychology and help people have a why. Mm. like you yeah. if you help them understand and then give them graded exposures to pain like you know you put them on a 2k row progression sometimes i'd run a progression that's very like anti energy system training where it's like right. we're going to do a 2k row every week like you're just literally going to yeah. face it every week and give people graded opportunities to get better it moves the needle a little bit but i think the best just they either have it or they developed it or they want it or i'm not sure yeah i think there's you know I, I guess I used to, let me put it to you this way. I used to think that knowing how to pace workouts was something you kind of either have or you didn't. And I don't agree with that anymore. I yeah. think it can be, I think it can be taught. Yeah. And so I think there probably would be ways to, to teach pain tolerance. I think it would, yeah, I think uh, probably a lot, a lot of it would come down to more like psychology and yeah. talking to them yeah. like, okay, why are you doing this? And yeah. you know, what are your goals? And, yeah. and then like making them understand this is huge part of that is going to be, you know, pain tolerance in these things. And then, yeah, exposure to those things. Um, and maybe talking to more athletes that they look up to and watching them and then watching videos of themselves and, you know, hearing their experience of how much it hurt and then starting to realize like, Oh, uh, there is a gap. Yeah. And it's, and it's, still, it's, it's still be measurable. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's subjective. Yeah. <laughs> but, and so probably the people that subjectively can't go as hard, as you know, let's say you think they should in order to be, you know, successful in the sport, those people m might be very like objective people, maybe. Yeah. I suppose there'd be a mix. Some of them would probably be very sensitive, maybe like emotionally yeah. sensitive people. And then, but some of them might be very robotic, more like me. Um, <laughs> 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 and they might be too like, oh, like this is starting yeah. to hurt. You know, I need to. You know, <laughs> this <laughs> is starting <laughs> to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> they need this too much. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. What is, what is my purpose? <laughs> you, you pass butter. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> you suffer. No, not that much. Um, so maybe like trying to quantify it. Fair. Might, yeah. Might help. Yeah. Like if, if you can get above a nine out of 10 pain sensation and hold it for longer than 30 seconds, it's a victory in this session and like give them yeah. almost like coaching intentions. Yeah. And I think, I think just again, trying to give them a bunch of data and like, whether it's speaking with them, getting them to talk to other elite athletes, showing the videos of them. Hey, here's a video of you on your assault bike sprints. Here's a video of this guy on his assault bike sprints. <laughs> here's and him throwing up. After. Yeah. And here's like, and you look at the look on yeah. their face and your look, and then you talk to them. How did that feel? And they describe like the physical sensations they experienced. Like, Oh, I experienced none of those. I yeah. experienced a, a, a subtle burn. Yeah. In, my yeah. Right <laughs> squad. <laughs> in the VMO. I could feel my heart. Yeah. 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 It's like, I, I started to feel a slight arch in my low back and I thought, mm, I should slow down. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Other guys like I tried to break the yeah, bike yeah, yeah. and instead my heart exploded. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed this clip from episode 127 of the Corpus Animus podcast. For the full episode, click the link on the screen or listen to the audio version on all major podcast providers.